Should you become a nuclear medicine tech in 2022? The purpose of this video is to help you figure that out. We're going to go over salaries, demand, demographics, and more to help you figure out whether this particular occupation is for you. Nuclear medicine technologists or techs prepare radioactive drugs and administer them to patients for imaging or treatment. They provide technical support to physicians or others who diagnose, care for, and treat patients. They also prepare stock solutions of radioactive materials and calculate doses to be administered by radiologists. They're also involved in producing computer-generated or film image for interpretation by a physician. They perform quality control checks on lab equipment or cameras, and they can develop treatment procedures for nuclear medicine treatment programs. The vast majority of nuclear medicine techs work in hospitals, about 68%, about 13% work in physician offices, and about 4% work in labs outside of hospitals and physician offices. And just like many other occupations in the healthcare industry, nuclear medicine techs tend to report high job satisfaction and high meaning. According to the Payscale Meaning Survey, about 79% of surveyed nuclear medicine techs reported extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their jobs, and about 82% of surveyed nuclear medicine techs think their work makes the world a better place. And many of the healthcare occupations report pretty high job satisfaction and high meaning. If we were to compare nuclear medicine tech techs against many of the other healthcare occupations, these are kind of the results. Of these five different healthcare occupations, radiation therapists actually report the highest job satisfaction and highest meaning with registered nurses of these five different occupations reporting the lowest job satisfaction and meaning. Nuclear medicine techs are kind of in the middle along medical sonographers and surgical techs. And this is very common among many of the different healthcare occupations. But there is definitely something you should know about healthcare occupations. They tend to have a higher illness and injury rate than occupations in different industries. In 2020, there was about 200 cases involving injury or illness for nuclear medicine techs. And it involved about 90 overexertions and 90 nuclear medicine techs reporting sick due to their job. Now, keep in mind, we're actually going to get into the number of nuclear medicine techs later in the video, but there's only around 17,000 nuclear medicine techs. They tend to have a lower injury and illness rate than registered nurses and some of the other healthcare fields, the craziest being psychiatric techs. Now, as far as demographics are concerned, what kind of people tend to become nuclear medicine techs? This tends to be a female dominated occupation, but not as extreme as some of the other healthcare occupations. Now, unfortunately, as demographics are concerned, we have the demographics of healthcare practitioners, but because this is actually a pretty small field of about 17, 18,000 employed, the government actually doesn't have enough data to provide a picture of the demographics of nuclear medicine techs, but we can look at healthcare practitioners. But first, the demographics of the United States would be 51% female, 19% Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 14% African American, and 6% Asian American. Meanwhile, for healthcare practitioners, tends to slant a little female. About 74% of healthcare practitioners report being female, 9% Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 12% African-American and 10% Asian-American. Now, usually I provide the Myers-Briggs types for different occupations. I, by the way, this is all from this particular book. It's a kind of expensive, it's like $200. But unfortunately, because for nuclear medicine techs, this is a small occupation. So they actually don't have a page in there for nuclear medicine techs. So we don't really know the ideal Myers-Briggs personality type for this particular occupation, but you could look at a similar field, maybe like an MRI tech or something, and look at the results of that and compare it to this particular occupation. Next up, what kind of education do you need to become a nuclear medicine tech? If you were to go to the government website, they would say you'd probably need some kind of associate's degree, some two-year degree, but Another survey they do is they look at the education of employed nuclear medicine techs. So I'm going to show that for you right now. They actually found in this survey that about 52% of nuclear medicine techs that are employed have a bachelor's degree, 20% have an associate's degree, 13% have a master's degree, and 3% have a PhD. Now it definitely saves you money if you can get into this occupation with just a two-year degree, specifically a two-year public degree. When we look at the average annual tuition and fees for 2020 and 2021, a two-year your public degree would be about $3,500 per year. The next cheapest being a four-year public where it's about 9,375. And as you can see, private two-year and private four-year are way more expensive. Also keep in mind that, and this is common among pretty much every single healthcare occupation, 
Depending on the state that you're in, you have to be certified and you probably have to go to an accredited program in order to become employed as a nuclear medicine tech in the state at which you wanna work. Next up, we have wages. What kind of wages can nuclear medicine techs expect in 2022. The average base salary for a nuclear medicine tech in 2021 was $84,850. This was more than licensed nurses. This was more than medical sonographers. This was more than registered nurses and surgical techs. Now, one of the great things about all of these occupations is the fact that you can typically work overtime and really boost your pay depending on the state that you live in. Most states will give you time and a half above 40 hours a week. And then there's certain states like California where actually double time kicks in at a certain point if you're going above, I think it's like 12 hours in a single day and going over a certain amount per week. So there's definitely stories of registered nurses making over 200,000, 300,000 sometimes in a single year. Same with this particular occupation. Typically you can get overtime and get compensated for that overtime very well. Most occupations pay overtime, but there's certain occupations that do not, such as teachers and restaurant managers. Now, the wages for nuclear medicine techs have been rising over time. In 2016, the average base salary for a nuclear medicine tech was $75,960. This grew to $84,850 in 2021. This means that between 2020 and 2021, the average nuclear medicine tech saw a $2,770 raise basically a 3% raise between 2020 and 2021. And also keep in mind, this is a national average base salary. Depending on the state or the metro area that you live in, nuclear medicine techs can make a lot more than this, but this is an average. So there's actually certain metro areas that pay a lot less than this as well. And just like with my medical sonographer video, the places that tend to pay nuclear medicine techs a lot more than the average, they're basically all in California. The average base salary for a nuclear medicine tech in San Jose, California is $149,860. This is before any overtime. And like I told you previously, uh, pretty much lots of different workers. This is a state law. Lots of workers in California get double time if they're working a certain amount per week or a certain amount per day. Another high paying place would be Sacramento. Average base salary there is around $135,000 per year. So nuclear medicine techs can make a lot more. They can have a much higher base salary depending on which part of the country they live in and which labor market they wanna work in. Finally, we get to demand, and this is one of the weak spots of becoming a nuclear medicine tech. The fact that this is a pretty small occupation. In 2021, there was only 17,140 employed nuclear medicine techs. There is a fraction of the number of nuclear medicine techs when compared to licensed nurses and registered nurses, where there's over 3 million employed registered nurses in the entire United States, only around 17,000 nuclear medicine techs. And also the government isn't actually that bullish about the future job prospects of nuclear medicine techs. They're only predicting a 2% growth in jobs over the next 10 years. This is less than pretty much all the other healthcare occupations I've been talking about previously. New licensed nurses, medical sonographers, they all have a higher growth rate. So it's a small occupation and it's not growing that much. And to make matters worse, when you look at the past couple of years for nuclear medicine techs, the number of employed has been falling. In 2016, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported 19,650 employed nuclear medicine techs. By 2021, this shrank to 17,140. So between 2016 and 2021, there was a loss of over 2,500 employed nuclear medicine techs in the United States. And we can have one more data point we can look at. We can actually look at job postings. Do the job postings right now, if you were to go on Indeed, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, do the job postings reflect this reality where there's less, there's going to be less nuclear medicine techs going forward over the next couple of years? Well, I went on Indeed and Glassdoor. On Glassdoor, I found 951 job postings related to nuclear medicine tech on Indeed 2087. And on LinkedIn, I only found 579 job postings for nuclear medicine techs. So as you can see, there are definitely some pros and cons of joining this particular occupation. People that work as nuclear medicine techs report high job satisfaction. They report high meaning. It might only require an associate's degree. And if you go to a two year public associate's degree, very little debt. You know, it, may, it might just cost you about $7,000 in tuition and fees over two years if you go to an accredited nuclear medicine tech program. So the barrier to entry is lower than many other occupations, but the number of employed has been 
falling. You might not be able to live in the places you want to live because there's only 17,000 nuclear medicine techs and the number of employed has been falling at least over the past, at least since 2016. So as you can see, there are definitely some pros and cons. There's other healthcare occupations that you can look at. Also, if you need help choosing a particular career, we have the solution for you. We have choose the right career, our seven step process for choosing an occupation in 2022. We take into account your interests, your values, your personality, and more. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out the link below. And also I have a lot of other content on different healthcare occupations. Feel free to check them out. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.